meet both triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. It was a message that he wanted to share with his team after a week of practice that Coach Cut said wasn't just a good week of practice, but it was a special week of practice. Tom James says a lot from a coach that has decades of coaching experience. Absolutely, Abby. You know, both of these coaches, you, you, you get a sense that you just love to have your young men play football for them. James, our weather report brought to you by North Myrtle Beach Convention and Visitors Bureau. A perfect 78 degrees, very light breezes and sunny. Broken clouds up above in the blue skies of Durham, North Carolina. Duke won the toss and elected to defer. So the Blue Devils will kick it away to get our game started. That's six in a row, isn't it? Six coin toss victories in a row. That's pretty good. Will it translate to a victory on this field? We're going to find out. Tobias Oliver, deep man, along with Nathan Cottrell for Georgia Tech. As A.J. Reed will put it in the air. Duke and Georgia Tech, the 87th all-time meeting. Fair catch made by Oliver. James Graham got his first career start last week against North Carolina for Georgia Tech. Completed 11 passes, 171 yards, and a couple of TD passes, James. Well, he's a guy who ran the single wing in high school. That's why he was there. Here's a new staff, but oh, guess what? He can sling it around the yard a little bit as well. And a little oopsie doop, Tim Tebow type of pass on LSU Florida weekend, nonetheless. But uh, just big, big future for this guy, the redshirt freshman. And he is our Hardy star to watch. Ran for 48 yards in that game against North Carolina. This is Griffin. So James Graham, the redshirt freshman from Fitzgerald, Georgia. That's nine yards on the play for Georgia Tech. Opening moments. 11 out of 24 a week ago against North Carolina. It was a loss, though, 38-22. Georgia Tech did compile 321 yards of total offense, and that a season high for the Yellow Jackets. Two yards on the play is enough from Jordan Mason. It's a first down for Georgia Tech. Well, Jordan Mason, we saw the first carry by Jamius Griffin. Expect to see a handful of, of very good running backs here and, and expect to see a few quarterbacks. We've seen plenty throughout the season for Georgia Tech here early on. Quick pass, short of the 40. That is the tight end for Georgia Tech, Tyler Davis. Only two yards on that play as Carter made the tackle for Duke. Let him dink and dunk, keep him in front of you all day. Don't give up the big plays. And, and some nice short passes for the young quarterback to Tyler Davis, who's a graduate transfer from Connecticut. There weren't any tie down ends around on this team. So you had to go out and get some bodies to play some of these positions for the new offense, the new look you're trying. Second and eight for Graham. Escapes the pocket. Gets to the 40 and goes out of bounds. Right near the marker, Michael Carter forced him out. It was an eight yard play for Graham. We told you that Tyler Davis is wearing the number 90. That's in honor of Brandon Adams, who passed away in March. Former defensive lineman for Georgia Tech. They honor their teammate. One player gets to wear that number per game today. It is Davis. That's Jordan Mason. Mason inside the 40. Back-to-back -back plays for first downs for Georgia Tech. Hill and Demukeji made the tackle, but that's a 19-yard play for Georgia Tech. This is an offensive line that is makeshift, admittedly, by this Georgia Tech staff. But look at them firing off the spot and getting hats on hats and winning those battles up front early. And here's a short game, but it's it's a, an offense still learning. The, the center, William Lay, first start, not just James Graham, but first start at Georgia Tech was for Lay, the former walk-on, or current walk-on, rather, against North Carolina last week. We got a lot of developing to do up front, but right now they're playing some pretty fired-up football, looking for their first points in a first quarter here this season. 
Georgia Tech is last in total offense in the ACC, just 296 total yards per game. It's 14th at the bottom of the conference, although moving the ball effectively, and it's a short game here, Jemias Griffin, number 22, the freshman from Rome, Georgia. It's going to bring up third down for the Yellow Jackets. 13th in the conference, James, just 30% on third down this season. Matt Guerrero, defensive coordinator. Do you bring him? Do you bring that blitz, the young guy? But you also got to be careful. He's slippery. James Graham can tuck it and go and hurt you. On third and seven for Graham. Gets out of the pocket. He's got the first down and more inside the 10. And Graham to the front corner of the end zone for a Georgia Tech touchdown. There are two penalty markers on the field. Personal foul, illegal blindside block, number 15, offense, 15-yard penalty, repeat third down. Well, point of emphasis, and James Graham just said it, how slippery he can be. It looked like Duke in their rush lanes, and there you're going to see it right there. And that's, that's, that's a point of emphasis, trying to... Keep it safe, as safe as possible down there for these young football players. And it's, you better believe something that Jeff Collins and his, his staff have gone over time and time again. But an unfortunate call if you're a Tech fan with the right call nonetheless. And now instead of the six points in the first quarter of this season, it's a third down and 12. Malachi Carter with the illegal block on Dylan Singleton. Out of that Duke secondary. Now third and 12. Inside the 30, Jerry Howard Jr. And that is going to be enough for a first down. Just inside the 25. Now the mark is right at the 25. And that's what they needed. And yes, it is now confirmed. A first down for Georgia Tech on third and 12. Coming out of the backfield and just turning on the Jets. Jerry Howard Jr. into the line. A short gain on first down. Give him three yards on the play. A third down pickup, you, you get some help with that penalty. And here's another look at it, just, just slipping out. And you've got guys trailing. And you got to believe somebody wasn't on the same page. And a late reaction cost you a first down. And you're going to have a chance to get off the field. Graham, safety valve, Jordan Mason. He's taken out of bounds at about the 17 or so. Four yards on the play for Jordan Mason, who is the leading rusher on this team. Comes up with the catch in this instance, his eighth of the season. I like the play calling here early for the Yellow Jackets. Dink it around. Some easy throws for your young quarterback, James Graham, who can also throw it. Deep, nice touch on him, a long ball. We saw it a couple times against North Carolina last week. Get some confidence and some feel good here early as he gets slathered up. Graham's got an open man. Jerry Howard Jr. It's a touchdown of 19 yards. Georgia Tech in the end zone first. For the first time this season, the Jackets on the board in the first 15 minutes. You know what I like most of all about this is Jerry Howard, as the extra point goes through to make it 7 and up. Jerry Howard had great effort time and time again on special teams. He stood out against North Carolina. Here he's getting paid off for all his hard work, and he's taking care of the yellow 510 in Blacksburg. The offense had zero turnovers, zero sacks allowed. They've got to get stingy. Carter. He's got the 20. Falls across the 25. Michael Carter, the second. On the return, Jerry Howard Jr. Made the play on special teams after a 20-yard return. 
You know, we talked about Quentin Harris and, and him waiting his turn. Uh, guys transferring all over the country when they're not going to get their shot, they know in their first couple of years, Quentin Harris, well, he didn't do that. And here he is running the show in his senior year with Duke after Daniel Jones is gone. Jerry Howard, you don't see that every day. Guy scores a big touchdown, and he's right back out there making the tackle on the ensuing kickoff on special teams. Jackson. Deion Jackson very close to a first down near the 35-yard line. Tariq Carpenter made the tackle, forced him out of bounds. That's a 10-yard play and a first down for Deion Jackson. Well, early on, you're seeing both of these defenses not doing a great job of, of setting that edge. Turn it back in. Turn those guys back in where all your help is. Scott Bracey on the play for Duke. That's a five-yard play. Bracey, the junior from Richmond, Virginia. First offensive series for Duke. Incomplete pass. Again, Bracey was the target. Trey Swilling defending for Georgia Tech number three. Back in that Clemson game, Swelling had an interception. Here he plays it well. Watch him watch those eyes. Gosh, that's perfect. That, that's pretty. Watching those eyes. When the eyes of the receiver get big, well, it's for a reason. That ball's coming. When those hands go up, rake through those hands, rip that ball away. Nice job. Let's see if they can get off the field on third down there. Fourth in the conference, 44% on third down. Trying to get this one. Going to be awfully close to the 45-yard line. Noah Gray, the junior from Lemonster, Massachusetts. The tight end made the catch. They got four yards. Charlie Thomas on the tackle. Well, how about David Cutcliffe talking about number 87, his tight end yesterday? He's not going to have it. He's a yard short. I thought he had the yardage to get there, but he set up shot just a yard shy of that 45-yard line. A good job of putting him down, so they're out there going for it. 8 of 12 on fourth down this season for the Blue Devils, and they've got it with Deion Jackson. Three yards is plenty to move the chains for the Blue Devils. It's a big offensive line. Not just with that tight end, Noah Gray, but that offensive line, Coach Cut is really happy with the way they've played here this year. Jackson only one on that carry. Charlie Thomas, who is an absolute tackling machine for this Georgia Tech defense as Duke goes with tempo. Harris from the pocket. Spins it down the field, down near the 10, and caught Jalen Calhoun against two defenders all the way down to the Georgia Tech 10-yard line. How about this throw and catch? There was tight coverage underneath. Helps coming from the safety up above, and Carpenter just misjudges it. He had the angle. He had the time. He waits on that ball. More aggressive is Duke, and they're... Knocking on the door. You know, you hear coaches talk about ball skills. Ball skills, just, just timing it up, getting over there. It's a good break by Carpenter. It's a good angle, but it's Calhoun that high points it and rips it away in a beautiful throw. That by the quarterback, Quentin Harris. Yeah, that play went for 42 yards in the red zone for Duke. Looking into the end zone, just too far for the receiver, Jalen Calhoun. Caleb Oliver trying to stay with him in the back corner of the end zone. So that brings up third and goal for the Blue Devils. Inside our CPI security red zone for Duke. And this season, 89%, and that includes 12 touchdowns on 18 trips in the red zone, tied for fourth in the ACC. From the 10-yard line, Harris looking right. And that pass in some traffic to Calhoun. Caleb Oliver knocked it down. It's been a nice job, even with the big completion. This secondary here for Georgia Tech has been tight in coverage. Every single time that ball's been thrown, and a nice job to come up with the stop and force a field goal try by Georgia Tech after the big play. It's going to be A.J. Reed for Duke has not missed this season. That long of 50 came against North Carolina A&T. Also, his longest attempt of the season was the 50-yarder, which he made. 
Number 95, to win. offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. Gary Patterson is our referee today. But not the one who gets really nervous on the sidelines and keeps tying his <laughs> shoes. That guy's in Fort Worth. Gary Patterson, the TCU Horn Frog, head coach. Although he might tie his shoes. <laughs> that last penalty on McSwain to move it back. It's going to be an attempt of 33 yards from A.J. Reed, the junior from Prattville, Alabama. Six of six on the season. Can he stay perfect? The answer is a resounding yes for the Blue Devils. They're on the board. A 33 for the Rose Bowl, won by Oregon State 20 to 16 right here at Wallace Wade Stadium. Named after the legendary coach, 16 years as the head coach of the Blue Devils and 110 wins, first in school history. This is Oliver, just past the 15 yard line. 11 yards on the return for Tobias Oliver. Jeremiah Lewis on special teams. Well, last drive, they got it going. On the ground a little bit, you saw the wheels from James Graham and also guys like Jamius Griffin and Jordan Mason pounding it as well. And to finish things off, after the big penalty on third down, what looked to be a touchdown, instead it's third down and 12, and instead it's a touchdown by Jerry Howard instead of James Graham. Four for four to start for the redshirt freshman. Graham runs into a Duke roadblock and loses one. 96 is Chris Rump, the second. Kobe Kwanzaa also in the vicinity for the Blue Devils. Chris Rump coming off an All-American freshman campaign a year ago out of Buholtz High School in Gainesville, home to the four-time state champion swim team. Four in a row, that is. Tina Bates is the head coach. Five receivers set for the Jackets. Graham going down the middle of the field. Oliver had a couple of steps, but the ball was too far for Tobias Oliver. Dylan Singleton is back in coverage. Uh, just the, in pass coverage, it's just, just too many times here today. You've seen backs slipping out of the end zone, and guys kind of standing flat-footed uh, flat in their coverage responsibilities. You certainly can't let a guy just run right past you because both of these quarterbacks, we've seen James Graham last week, Quentin Harris a couple times already today. They're going to put it on the money. So here's another big third down. Two for two on third down. The pocket collapses. The ball's on the turf. Ball on the natural grass surface of Wallace Wade Stadium, covered by Georgia Tech, but a loss of nine. Victor Demukeji with the pressure. It's going to be fourth down for the Jackets deep in their own territory. Well, it looks like they had Graham bottled up on the play that was called back earlier here. They do a good job of staying in the rush lanes, and what looked to be good pressure for the redshirt freshman looking ahead. Coming off that blind side to come in hard and low, Victor Dimukeji making his 31st start today. Harvard from his own end zone. And they'll down it near that 45-yard line. The punt from Presley Harvard was 46 yards. All-conference punter for Georgia Tech. Uh, deep in his own territory, Harvin has done such a fantastic job, as has that punt team for Jeff Collins and company here this year. And they better. They get to eat first at pregame meals. That's that's muy importante for the guys in Atlanta. He says it's the most important team, the most important unit out there. But even after the hard yeah, cover and the big punt, you still got Duke setting up shop about midfield to start this second drive. Dimu Keiji with his third sack for the season there on third down to force the punt. And that leads the team. His offensive unit is on the field with Critton Harris. Swings it out to Calhoun. Cross midfield and into Yellow Jacket Real Estate. Wanye Thomas forced him out of bounds. They got nine yards. You'll remember that combination. Harris and Calhoun combined for a 42-yard pass play, James, on the previous drive. Calhoun just a freshman, a high school quarterback, one of many on this team, active early. 
First down yardage for Quentin Harris, the senior from Wilton, Connecticut. And a captain for the Blue Devils. Four yards on the play and the sticks are moving. How about that? Making his eighth start here today as a Blue Devil. They mentioned it off the top, Tom, but it's in this day and age, there are so many times this guy would have been somewhere else a long time ago. The pass to Bobo spins away from the first man and then goes grill to grill with contact inside the 30. He ran into Zamari Walton, 14 yards, very close to the top of the turf. Yes, it was. Let's take another look at it. Now, that's, you know what? That's a catch, and it's, it's a good call. They're going to look at it. It can hit the ground as long as the ground doesn't assist with the catch. So it's, it's got to be evidence to overturn, and I'm not, not so sure that it will be there. Even though it did touch the ground, I don't think that that's why he made the catch. But we'll check that when we come back to Durham. The previous play is under review. Gary Patterson just taking off the headset. It was determined that the pass was incomplete. Please reset the clock to 4 minutes and 59 seconds. It'll be second and 10 from the 42-yard line. There was indisputable video evidence to overturn the call, James Biggs. That's your theory. No, I get it. It's it's a tough one. And, and had, it, had it been ruled incomplete, it would have been an easy call. But the fact that it was ruled a catch on the field, I thought maybe that that might give the catch a chance. Second and ten nonetheless. Larry Mallard is our replay official. And everyone in collaboration with the command center in Greensboro, North Carolina. So they overturned the previous play. This is going to be Durant on the run, and he'll get four yards for the sophomore. Bruce Jordan Swilling, number 12, on the tackle, the junior from New Orleans, Louisiana. So it's a one-two punch. What was a one-two-three punch? Britton Brown is officially out for the season. He'll have surgery, the other running back for Duke. Nice big hole opened up there for Durant, the sophomore out of McCormick, South Carolina, by that offensive line, Wallabau. The center, Wallabau, Wallabau, that's right, right? Wallabau? Say it with me. Wallabau. 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 <laughs> well, it sounds good if you're a Duke fan, because he's a nice transfer in from Ohio State. And behind him, Harris churns, and it looks like he will get a first down here. So for the second time in the game, Duke converts on fourth down. Wow, look at him going low. That's pretty. And that's pretty. Guys trying to get low. They're certainly used to that at Georgia Tech. Trying to get pad under pad going up against that cutting offensive line so many years. Harris out of a sturdy pocket down near the pylon. Knocked away. Tariq Carpenter back in coverage against Noah Gray, the junior. Much bigger body of Noah Gray. And again, I've been impressed early with this secondary of Georgia Tech. Wall him off, wall him off. See, see how he's got a feel? He's, he's not pushing, he's not interfering, but you got to have a feel for that body where he is. And the, as that route runner, you got to give your quarterback a little bit of space. Running out of room there, but a nice try. Good defensive play. This is Harris to the air again. It's complete near the 20-yard line of the first down. Scott Bracey racing down that 15-yard line. And taken down by Trey Swilling. 17 yards for Duke on the play. Back into the red zone. Starts up front. Good job by the offensive line, giving Harris enough time. Let that crosser come through, and Scott Bracey moving those chains. The guy's up front. There's Wallabaugh. 5 of 10 passing for Harris. They're going to run it up the middle with Mateo Durant doing the majority. Running on this drive, and Durant picking up four yards for the Blue Devils. Second trip to the red zone. They got a 33-yard field goal earlier in the quarter from A.J. Reed. David Curry, 16 tackles against North Carolina last week. A career high for him and the leading tackler for Georgia Tech. Kept it. They're going to mark him down near the six-yard line. That's five yards on the play. Bruce Jordan swilling, making the tackle. Well, and it looks to be a keeper all the way behind the big bodies. It was Zach Baker leading the charge. 
63. Jacob Monk as well in a nice little wall. Georgia Tech, Lucky Harris didn't slip into the end zone. A running play inside the five for Durant. And that is enough for a first down. First and goal for the Blue Devils as Oliver made the tackle. No surprise that Duke has come out and decided to be smash mouth and physical. Run that football early on here today. Physicality in the ground game is what got him back into it offensively as we take a look at the offensive coordinator, Coach Roper, up in the booth. It's what got him back in the game that they struggled early with the turnovers against Pitt. This is the 12th play of the drive. Harris hung on to the ball, down to about the three-yard line. And just two yards on the play for Quinton Harris. Last week, passed for 165 yards and a touchdown, did throw the two interceptions, but also had two rushing touchdowns in the game against Pittsburgh. And Harris this season has four rushing TDs in total. On second and goal, he'll toss it out. To the end zone and a touchdown. Eli Pankel on the play for three yards. Duke is in the end zone. Quick pitch to the playmaker there in motion outside. Look at him blocking up front. And how about the blow coming across by Quez Jackson, the big linebacker. 6'1", 220, but it's still not enough. 6'3", 195, the freshman. Eli Pankle wins out. He wants in that end zone, and no one's going to stop him. That's a nice physical run by a little man. A full head of steam. And first touchdown of the day for the Blue Devils. Playmakers, playmakers, you're starting to see more and more show up here in Durham. And that's not bad for a guy who only played two seasons of high school football as they take another look at it. And that will be a touchdown. No body part hit before that ball crosses the plane of the goal line. Nice call there. But, yeah, a, a great basketball player and track star as well at Pendleton Heights in Pendleton, Indiana. First touch, first rush of the season, and first TD for Pangle. But he has two catches, and each of those have gone for touchdowns. Every time he touches the ball, he scores. He is three for three when he touches the football. Took it in from three yards away, and the Blue Devils with the extra point have taken the 10-7 lead. So with 118 to go, we go down to the field, and Abby Labar. Yeah, well, you talk about the youth of this young receiving court as a whole. And we just saw that touchdown. Jake Bobo, he said they like to do things outside of practice and off the field together. It helps build that chemistry, which is important for a young receiving court. One of the things they do, they like to go to other sporting events as a group. Soccer games specifically, I joked with them. I said, men's or women's more often. He said women's, for sure. The other thing is they order pizza and wings on Thursday nights, get on the jug machine, and they like to catch 50 or 60 balls hang out it's a great group thing to do to continue to build that camaraderie love it the relationships the friendships you know it's that's what as much as anything as much as playing in front of 90,000, as much as going to death valley and playing in front of a crowd like that it's your friendships your buddies and hanging out with your boys it means so much and those are the things that i'll guarantee you that most football players will say they miss the most when their playing career is done so number six, four six for the Duke and he's three Duke Blue Devils and he's three for three. Two receiving TDs and a rushing TD on his three touches this season for the freshman. After going in from three yards out, there will be no return. Kick off of the end zone. 118 to go in our first quarter. And how about that? I mean, you had a linebacker, Tom, coming across. I mean, just coming. And, and it was a good angle. It was a good blow up high as well by the linebacker for Georgia Tech, Quez Jackson. You got to tackle him high there on the goal line. But Eli Pankle, it's that full head of steam. You know, speaking of soccer, they're going to the soccer uh, matches here. Let's, Jeff Collins is actually named after a soccer player. How about that? 
On first down for Georgia Tech, it's Jordan Mason breaking through and past the 30-yard line, stumbling up to the 34, and Mason got nine. Leonard Johnson tripped him up. Jordan Mason, sophomore. Just, just that edge. They've had success. Georgia Tech has just getting that ball outside. That would be a little bit more physical on the edges here defensively for Duke. This is Mason again. Fifth carry of the game for Mason up to the 35-yard line. And that's a first down for Georgia Tech. Got one. That was enough. He'll head to the sidelines. Thousand-yard rusher on this Georgia Tech team. Twelve career rushing touchdowns from Mason. Had two of those in that incredible football game against the Citadel earlier this season that went to overtime. Jerry Howard Jr. A lot of Duke blue shirts around him, and he loses one. Kwanzaa and Hill leading the defensive attack. We've got some good linebacker play for both of these teams. You mentioned over on Georgia Tech side. Kobe Kwanzaa, a good one as well. Well, how about it? Some physical football here in Durham to start. The ground game is going for both of these teams. They're doing it through the air as well. 10 to 7 after one quarter of play. We've got a good one here today in the ACC. Ten seven Blue Devils lead. Tom Wormy, James Bates, Abby Labar on the sidelines, ready to start the second quarter with Duke out in front of Georgia Tech in their 87th all-time meeting. And Georgia Tech with the football. Blue Devil defense making the play. Only two yards there for Georgia Tech and Jordan Mason. And for more on the linebacking core for the Blue Devils, down to Abby. You mentioned that duo of Kobe Kwanzaa and Brandon Hill. The two had to step into big shoes this year after the departure of Joe Giles Harris and Ben Humphreys. And so I asked them what their relationship was like since they've grown together, built that chemistry to step into this role. And you know it's a good one. They said their favorite thing to do together is watch anime and go to Waffle House. <laughs> it's a good combo. Let's see what they've got here on third down, Abby. Two for three on third down. Graham on the run, unloads it. The ball knocked away up near midfield. Tyler Davis was the intended receiver. Waters in there who had the big pick on the uh, in the first quarter against Pitt at the goal line. You got to help your guy out. Oh, it's in your hands. Hold on to it because your quarterback's taking a shot. James Graham, how about that? Buying some time, putting those feet down, and delivering a strike. Would have been a first down, but a nice play by Waters to jar it loose. Blackwell is the deep man. He's inside his own 10. Retrieves it. Runs with it. Far sideline. Blackwell, and he's out of bounds. Arvin had to come up and make sure that he would go no further. The punt was 54 yards. The return from Blackwell was 32 yards. You know, it was a tough time covering, like pulling up just at the last second as you had a defender dive, but no penalty right there. It was Duke had quite an adventure covering punts against Pitt the other night. And benefiting off of the Paris Ford fumble. On a punt returned. Won't set up a touchdown. Take a look at those stats now. One for four on third downs here this offense, but they lead. They did convert both of their fourth down chances. This is down the far sideline inside the 20. And it's caught. Daryl Harding Jr. against Trey Swilling. And Harding Jr. wins the fight for 41 yards for the Blue Devils. Well, and it was a fight. Swilling wanted a flag for a little bit of a push-off. And he won't get it right there. That's just football. And that's a nice no flag. And Harding, a freshman, again. We talked about the youth on this team. The youngsters are stepping up. Panko with the touchdown. Harding with a big catch there. But you do have a yellow jacket down on the field. And For Georgia Tech, he did walk off the field under his own strength of being attended to by the training staff for Georgia Tech. 
There's that last big play. The first couple weeks, we've seen a lot of guys running free in the secondary. We haven't seen it, even though we've had some completions here by Duke and he's willing, wanting the push off. But, you know, that and that's to be expected. And you let him fight, but just all, what I would say is, I like it, but let's be consistent. You know, because so many times you'll see a little little hand fighting on the other side and, and then you get a flag thrown. So if that's the way you're going to call it, keep it up. But I, even as a defender, I, I think that that's, that's a good one to keep the flag in the pocket on. And how about the job that Quentin Harris has done? Just dropping dimes. A couple of those could have, should have been caught. The 6 of 11, 118 yards. It's a good-looking quarterback here, though, finally getting a chance to see him play. After Daniel Jones on his way, the sixth pick overall last year to the New York Giants. Last pass to Harding went for 41 yards. They'll rush it with Durant. Cut down at the 15-yard line. Christian Campbell, number 10 for Georgia Tech, after four yards for Mateo Durant, the sophomore. Nice job by Campbell to get rid of the block in just that angle. So many times you see guys come up and, and got to go make the play for no gain. Hey, two, three yards, let him gain it, but don't, don't let him have the big play by missing a tackle. Nice job to drop him, keep him in front. Two for two in the red zone with a field goal and a touchdown for Duke. Durant unable to get away and no gain on the play. Kelton Dawson, number 91. So now third for Duke. There is a Georgia Tech player down. Brentavius Glanton places. Back at Wallace Wade Stadium, opened up in 1929. Third down for Duke inside the 10. Mateo Durant needed to get to the eight yard line and he's got enough. First and goal, Blue Devils. Durant goes seven yards. Yeah, they were firing up the money down over on the Georgia Tech sideline, but getting paid right here behind that offensive line. Durant, fresh set of downs inside the 10 yard line. Plenty of daylight for Durant, thanks to the blocking up front. Harris thought about a throw. Now he's going to run it inside the five, and he gets taken down after a five-yard gain by Demetrius Knight. Nice job to react defensively after they're all frozen, thinking the ball's going to be up in the air, regrouping, keeping them in front and out of that end zone. Nice, tough runner. Quentin Harris can run it when he needs to, but as we've seen many times, Got a nice arm. He's going to give it to Jackson up the middle. It's not a whole lot available for Deion Jackson, the junior from Atlanta, Georgia. Kelton Dawson making the tackle. Just a yard. And now third and goal for the Blue Devils. Just converted on third down a moment ago. They're fourth in the conference on the season, 44%. Two for five today. Quentin Harris rolls it out right, looking to the end zone with a pump fake, and Harris will not get to the goal line. Down to about the one as he ran into David Curry, and just a yard for Harris, and that presents fourth down for Duke. Nice job in coverage, and a good job heating it up by the linebacker Curry. He's got his guys there to help clean up. You got to wrap up, though, and be careful. If you didn't have defenders, there's a chance that Harris might have found his way into the end zone. But staying out there, the senior quarterback and his offense trying to punch it in the end zone and not settle for three right here already with a three-point lead. They are one for one already in this game on a fourth down truck. Two rushing touchdowns on the season for Harris. He's going to hand it off right up the middle and walking into the end zone. It's Deion Jackson for the Blue Devils from just a yard out. Well, a couple fourth down tries here today. There has been absolutely no hesitation from that Duke sidelines. You're staying out there. They go behind Wallabaugh, Zach Baker, Casey Holman. Left side of that line, big Zach Baker. The left guard, a senior from Green Cove Springs, Florida. So on fourth down from a yard out, Deion Jackson takes it into the end zone. With the Blue Devils touchdown. 
Oh, look at him fire off the left side of that line, Tom. That's an offensive lineman's dream. Let's keep running. He's going to join us in the second <laughs> half, so make sure you stick around. Oh. Coach Steve Spurrier, his mm -hmm. 1989 team being on yep. here today. ACC champs as the head coach of the Blue Devils. This is Oliver on the return past the 25-yard line. 26 yards on that return by Tobias Oliver. James, you made a good point. Fourth down for Duke. They've made it three times on three chances on fourth down, and the last one was for six points for Deion Jackson, rushing TD number four in the season. So 17 straight points now for the Blue Devils. After Georgia Tech scored on a pass play in the first quarter, James Graham to Jerry Howard Jr., 19 yards on that play. So early on, this is a big series here offensively for Georgia Tech. After they came storming out of the locker room and scored, that seven points was scored on their opening drive, and it was the first seven points that the Yellow Jackets have scored in the first quarter this year, and that's the two guys not on the same page running into each other and goes without saying one even if they don't run into each other you got too many blue jerseys in that area but <laughs> make it the worst it's lucky the pass goes incomplete so a second and ten now for Graham and the Jackets Jackets in search of their first ACC win and first win on the road away from Bobby Dodd Stadium that's Jordan Mason that is a loss of one they're coming off of a loss at home last week against North Carolina, 38-22. to 22. Yeah, they only had 92 yards in the first half against North Carolina and didn't score a point against the Tar Heels in the first half last week. Third and 11. Graham, improvisation. But only back to the 27-yard line as Waters makes the tackle. Just a yard after all that for James Graham. Well, yeah, it, it could have been a nightmare and a good job by the redshirt freshman. They keep cool, pick it up, tuck it, and go. And slips out of what could have been about a 10, 12-yard loss or even a fumble in Duke Ball right there deep in your own territory. Nice job by Graham. Get me what you can. Let's punt it and get out of here. Second straight, three and out for Georgia Tech. Harvin's punt to the 20, and Blackwell. Ball's on the turf. Duke able to cover. Ooh, that was a heck of a boom by Harvin. Good coverage. Askew down there almost jumped right on it. James, the punt was 56 yards. Jeremiah Lewis was able to cover this one. There he is, 39, Duke Blue. Issues for Blackwell. Well, you got to be around that football and a nice job to jump on it and, and tuck it in. You, you see him curl to the side. That's a lost start as well. So many times you'll see that the team maybe doesn't practice it enough. They're practicing it here in Durham. Tuck that ball and then you curl those legs around it and roll over it so nobody can rip it away. James, that sun is 93 million miles away, but may have played a factor as Blackwell tried to field that punt in. Was unable to do it cleanly. This is Calhoun. That'll be in the books as a pass for three yards. Justice Dingle on the tackle, Georgia Tech. Well, and, and quick over the ball, trying to keep a, an already tired defense worn down. They do a nice job of stuffing the run right here on second down, though, to force a third and long. 93, Chemeza there on the stop. And with the tempo one more time, we'll substitute so Georgia Tech can match and try to catch their breath. But that's one thing that hurts when your offense goes a quick three and out. Your defense right back out there. Can they get off the field here? Two for six on third down. Time for Harris. Pass complete. 35-yard line, Calhoun. Dancing his way past the 35. They got 13 yards on the play flag on the play as well. Nice protection early for Harris. The pressure came late and you had Oliver falling down. Personal foul. Targeting. Number five. Defense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Previous play is under further review.
Yes. Just clarification, James. I believe that's Gary six. Patterson meant six as in David Curry because number okay. five is Calhoun, the receiver. And here comes Curry into your picture there. Yeah, well, unfortunately for Yellow Jacket fans, I, I believe number six is is going to head to the locker room and not be able to play the rest of this game because that's a defenseless player. And that's the rule. And it's a it's a helmet to helmet shot. The guy hustling over there trying to make a play, and you know we talk about it all the time. It's such a quick bam bam play. You're going full speed. It's it's almost impossible to pull up. And that head comes in there and. Now having said all that, Jalen Calhoun has his fourth catch of the game for 67 yards. And again, it is a targeting review. And we're watching number six in white, David Curry. Feel the targeting is confirmed. Number six, Georgia Tech is disqualified for the remainder of the game. Jeff Collins shakes his head and it's it's tough. And he got a guy playing his guts out. And these guys, these guys don't want to hurt each other. And it's you know it's 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 the rule and I get it. And it's but I just it, it's it's a shame for any team. But that's that's the right call in the way the rule says. But 16 tackles you mentioned, Tom, against North Carolina coming off a career high. 36 tackles in the last three games, but they'll be without his services here the rest of the day. So David Curry makes that long walk to the visitors' dressing room here at Wallace Wade Stadium, Brooksfield. Jackson. Two yards for Deion Jackson. New Devils are three and two on the season, one and one in conference play, coming off the loss Saturday against Pittsburgh here at home. That stopped a three-game winning streak, 33-30. And now Duke has lost nine of the last ten against Pittsburgh, the defending champs in the chaotic coastal, full of chaos, thanks to the loss last night for Virginia to Miami. That at Hard Rock Stadium. NC State defeated Syracuse on Thursday. Two games already completed in the ACC. Defensive coordinator Andrew Thacker is calling him in there. And he's going to be calling him into a, a new leader defensively with Curry being out at the linebacker. He'll go right at his spot for that first down. Incomplete near the 30-yard line. Jake Bobo closest to that pass. Coach Cut, Blue Devils glad to have Bobo back out there. The sophomore, he injured his clavicle back in early August. Had surgery the next day. Returned a couple weeks ago in the big win over Virginia Tech in Blacksburg. 70 wins for Coach Cutcliffe as the coach of the Blue, Duke Blue Devils and all the way to the goal line and in. Mateo Durant right up the middle goes the distance for the second quarter touchdown. Coincidence, David Curry is the middle linebacker. He's dismissed from the game and they go back to back plays right up the gut. Offensive line does their job and look at Durant. Explosiveness right through the hole, keeps his feet and extends at the very end to put the tip of that ball, looks like across the plane, for a touchdown. If it's enough, it's a 39 yard run for the touchdown for Mateo Durant. Well, it, it looks close, and as they take a look at it, I don't know that we have the look directly down the line, and if we don't, I don't see how they can rule this one down. It would be his second rushing touchdown of the season, again, of 39 yards, but the play is under review. The call on the field is touchdown, so you must have indisputable video evidence to overturn the call, which is a score on the field for Duke. Put it to the official right on top of it as Durant was diving for the goal line. How about the effort? There's, there's a 
There's a spring in the step of Durant. You've got a couple pretty good backs in Deion Jackson and Mateo Durant. There's a little bit of, of bouncing. Fun energy. Well, that's a good look right there if he's... Based on that replay right there, James, they might mark him a few inches short of the goal line. What a replay from our production and technical crew, led by producer Eric Kendall, director Lonnie Dale this afternoon. I think that replay where we showed him going down, the left hand cradling the football, but the nose of the football not quite breaking the plane of the goal line. After further review, it was determined that the ball carrier's knee was down when the ball was over the six-inch line. The first and goal at the six-inch line. I didn't know there was a six-inch line. Wow, <laughs> I didn't that, now that is some precision. And maybe it's the six-inch blade. Wow. One blade of grass. They should paint it. By the way, when you look at this field quickly, it looks like a synthetic surface. It's just that good. It's a long six inches, yeah, but it's... <laughs> Half a yard would be. How's 18 inches sound, James? Yeah, 18 inch line. I mean, I don't know. Quez Jackson, that linebacker that is now in for David Curry. It's a game of inches. Quentin Harris, touchdown for Duke. How do you mark that one on the score sheet, James? Six inch run. Touchdown from six inches. Quentin Harris. Didn't have to do a whole lot there. Just gained six inches and you got six. <laughs> this is A.J. Reed. Well, it is lunchtime after all. What do you want, a foot long? Nah, just give me a six inch. 24-7 from just a yard out. It is Quentin Harris taking it into the end zone for Duke after the long run from Mateo Durant. Set up the touchdown from inside the one for Harris. And the rushing TD for Quentin Harris, his fifth of the season. On the line with the coaching staff, things are clicking for Duke. 24-7. That is 24 straight points after Georgia Tech scored on its first possession of our game this afternoon. Would they have 27 unanswered in the second half against Pitt? Yes, they did. In fact, they were trailing 26-3 late of the third against the Panthers. This is our Toyota Let's Go Places side-by-side -side comparison. First five starts in a Duke Blue Devil uniform for Harrison Jones. All right, look at that. Touchdowns, 11 touchdowns. He's turned it over a couple more times there. Quentin Harris, he saw the two last week against Pitt. But man, that's pretty spot on, isn't it? With the exception of the rushing yards over here. But you know what? That's the thing. Daniel Jones, he doesn't look like a guy that, that you would call a runner. But how many times did we see in his career at Duke where he would tuck it and get exactly what you needed? Third down situations, whatever. Blue Devils last year with Daniel Jones, the quarterback. Eight and five. They won their first four games of the season last year for David Cutcliffe. And three of the last five at the end of the year, including the Independence Bowl against Temple, 56 to 27. That is where Jeff Collins was the last two years. He was the head coach of the Owls. Had 15 wins. Now taking over this Georgia Tech program. They need a jolt in their offensive scheme. It was 6.25 and counting here in the half. Kwanzaa, Hill, linebackers combining on the stop of Graham for six yards. Well, Hill has had a very active day defensively. Had a, seven tackles in the first quarter, 11 last week against Pitt. We'll shut him down shy of that third down marker. And boy, do they ever need to convert right here. Georgia Tech, third down and four, they'll call it. Two for five on third down. Graham looking across the landscape has to take off. 
veering off to the left near the 35-yard line. That's what he needed to get to. They're going to mark him at the 34 as he got three yards. Brandon Hill again on the tackle. And that's a good effort and a good job, too, defensively. Rallying to the football and to shut him down shy. They'll leave that offense out there. You got to be careful defensively. You can't give him a freebie on a fourth down and short. Georgia Tech still with those timeouts. They may try to pull them off sides. But we absolutely can't afford to get stuck here on fourth and short. Two for seven on fourth this season. They're going to be two for eight. Kobe Kwanzaa in the backfield, dropping Jordan Mason for a three-yard loss on fourth down. Well, Abby talked about the big shoes that are being filled there in the linebacker position. Giles Harris and Humphreys are gone. Or are they? They just reload there at the linebacker spot. Kobe Kwanzaa leading the team already coming into today with four and a half tackles for loss a game. And a great big one there on fourth down to shut it down. And with 5.02 left before halftime, a chance for his Duke Blue Devil offense to come out there and add to an already pretty big lead here in the first half. Just over five minutes to go in our second quarter. Blue Devil offense back on the field. Deion Jackson. Giles Harris and Humphreys, for the longest time, they were so much fun to watch. The, the tag team duo combining for 586 tackles in their career here in Durham. And there's Brandon Hill and Kobe Kwanzaa, who they were mad that they weren't put as roommates early on, like Humphreys and Giles Harris. But like Abby said, they made it happen on their own. And there's a flag down. Flag on the run by Deion Jackson. Six yards. Again, there is a penalty marker prior to that play. 246 yards Kobe, of total offense. Number 50, offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Wallabaugh. We put 40 seconds on the play clock. Right there in the middle, the center, Wallabaugh. The player helmet came off. Transfer from Ohio State. Just grabs him and rustles him down. His, his dad, Tom, played football at Syracuse and then in the NFL for nine seasons. And his mom, you know, she was a, a Syracuse athlete as well. Played field hockey up there. Inside of four and a half minutes to go now. Another penalty marker is out on this play. It's Jackson sprinting out. Once again, a flag is thrown. The play went for 13 yards, but let's see what the penalty marker is. Personal foul. Illegal hands to the face. Number 32. Defense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic. First down. 32 is Young Juin. Correction. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. Sylvain Yunjun. Player from Belgium in this lineup for Georgia Tech. Well, I couldn't see it, but he just... That's a big hurt after you know, the right side, 32. Hands to the face. I'll just give him another opportunity. You, you had him in a third down long situation. The penalty helps him out. And now they're looking at another second down in short. The offensive line has done a fine job, not only in pass situations for Quentin Harris, but delivering that first blow, getting off the spot and pushing that defensive front back. Four for four in the red zone in the game for the Blue Devils, busting out to the left side. Deion Jackson. Rolling his way to the house at seven yards. Second TD run of the quarter for Deion Jackson. And his fifth rushing touchdown of the season. And the Blue Devils stampeding Georgia Tech right now, late in the half. A.J. Reed, 30 
31 7 Duke, 31 straight points after Georgia Tech scored on its first possession. Take a look at the, at the tight end lined up here. That's Noah Gray, 87, the left side of that line. And Noah Gray's going to win that edge battle, forcing his guy inside and making it easy. And how about the vision of Deion Jackson? Initially, he's up. It's, it's clogged up because, you know, defensively, everyone's jumping in there. They've, they've been hurt inside, so people are cheating a little bit. Gosh, I got to help out. Got to help out. You jump inside. You try to do too much, and then you've got a guy like Big Noah Gray helping to lead that charge. And, you know, Coach Cutcliffe, as, as, as one could imagine, I mean, just, just loves his players and, and has done so much for them that you wouldn't believe. But I don't know that I've ever heard him talk about a guy like he did Noah Gray. This, he, he said that this is the toughest guy maybe that he's ever been around, a high school quarterback. And Coach Cut actually wanted him as a quarterback. We talked about how he's playing through three big injuries. It, you know, not just little nicks here and there, but three injuries. He says he doesn't know how he does it. He's catching balls for Quentin Harris, but he's also leading the way on runs like that. Gray came into the game as the leading receiver for the Blue Devils. Gray with 24 catches. He's got one today. No return from Oliver. And the defensive scheme, offensive principles all being executed at a very high level by the Blue Devils today against the Yellow Jackets. You recall last year when the teams played in Atlanta, mid-October. It was a win for Duke at Georgia Tech, 28-14. Turnovers were the story of that game last year. Three from Georgia Tech and 21 points off of those turnovers for the Blue Devils. All they've done today is run it into the end zone. Four rushing touchdowns for Duke. Graham throwing on the run, and that one is incomplete. Looking for a Marion Brown. And after the, before the second down play, first a quick word from Advance Auto Parts. I can sign 12 autographs in six seconds. So reminding you to check your battery this fast, easy. That is the fifth straight incomplete pass from James Graham. Uh, we've had a couple drops. Brown has to catch that one. Got to help the young quarterback out. The guy the coaches call electric fast, Marion Brown from Jefferson High School down in Tampa, Florida. 100 meter finalist in high school. So you got to get him the ball. You to get him the ball, but you got to hang on to it. Penalty markers on the play. Whistle stopping. Before the snap, timeout, Georgia Tech. That's their first timeout of the half. Direction timeout for Georgia Tech. Now it is 31-7, James, but I'm sure David Cutcliffe has made it aware to his team that Jeff Collins' team last week in the second half rolled up 229 yards and all 22 of their points in a losing effort against North Carolina a week ago at home in Atlanta. Yeah, held scoreless there in that first half in the 38-22 loss there in Atlanta. And you know, in that second half, they averaged 8.8 .8 yards a play in James Graham's first start. And it's, uh, he hasn't had a lot of help. I, I think it's been an okay first half, but James Graham just hasn't had a lot of opportunities. He's had guys in his face. He's had a couple drops to a second down and 10. They call a timeout here and try to catch their breath. Make sure they've got the right play call in, see if they can get something going. A little bit more giddy up here to end the half just as they started it. Jeff Collins can't believe his eyes. 31-7 late in the second. Graham pressured. Spins away and as he throws, it's up for grabs. And it's on the turf incomplete. Chris Ruff right in on Graham. Well, he's got a helmet off down there and Kobe Kwanzaa. That's the senior from Manchester, Connecticut, Kobe Kwanzaa, one of the leaders of this team. Now hopefully he's all right. <laughs> Ball seemed to hang up there forever. And the pressure once again in the face of James Graham. And Yellow Jackets, lucky as can be, that 
And that ball found the turf. There's Kwanzaa in his helmet coming off. And like it was helped to come off, but no penalty flag. So Kwanzaa has to leave the game for a snap. And it'll be a third down and 10 here. So Graham is now four of 10 passing, 35 yards. And he's misfired on his last six attempts. Rolls it right, trying to throw on the run. Here come the blue shirts. He heaves it. And it sails out of bounds, despite the effort from Tobias Oliver. That's a name we have not called a whole lot today, James. And he's a player who needs to be involved in this offense for Georgia Tech. Yeah, it's a name that used to be called on every snap. And the guy used to be a quarterback. Moved over to the wide receiver position. But too good of an athlete, though. He can run. You got to find a place for him on the field. Good coverage by the Duke secondary. And the punt is blocked. Scooped up by the Blue Devils, and they're going to the end zone. They blocked the punt. I think it's Xander Gagnon. Does a good job of going airborne and he's taking the chance. You're rolling the dice there by going straight at that kicker and leaving your feet. He runs into him, you see, but it doesn't matter if you hit the football. A great job to go up and high point it, knock it down by the junior, and then scooping it and scoring it is Jackson. Javon Jackson knows what to do with it. So the Blue Devils get the block and the return. 14 yards into the end zone for Jackson. Whole lot of congratulations on that sideline. 38-7 now. Gagnon came in, blocked the punt, and Duke takes it to the end zone. There's the head ball coach. And Gavin Spurrier, his grandson. How about that? <laughs> he coaches showing up. I think he's drawing up some ball plays on his <laughs> iPhone there. There we go. Take a photo. Yeah. His 1989 team, James, that won the ACC when he was head coach here at Duke will be honored at halftime. No well, points are plenty. Just like back in 1989 when Coach Spurrier was on the sidelines for heading over to Gainesville, Florida. Yeah, looking forward to getting him up here. And how about that? So his, his son, Steve Spurrier Jr., who's on the staff with Mike Leach of at Washington State. That's his son, Gavin, who is actually one of three triplets anyway. He's got a brother, Luke, that runs track here and a sister that's a cheerleader at the University of Florida. No return for the Jackets. Coach Spurrier, all smiles, and why not? Sporting the Duke visor. I love that he went over during the game and got a picture. Hey, you, you know how to work this? Take, take a picture for me. Shoot, it's my grandson. <laughs> you know, scheduled to join us in the third quarter, the head ball coach, James Coach in the mid-90s, 1996 for the national championship at the University of Florida. 1979, Spurrier was quarterback coach at Georgia Tech. Yeah, he's got some ties to both schools. Head coach from 87 to 89 here in Durham. Two-time ACC Coach of the Year. This is Jordan Mason for a first down for Georgia Tech. 1989 ACC champs to be honored at halftime. 18 yards for Mason. Well, and you know, Tom, is... You go up and down the list of accolades. It's, I, I don't know if there's you can do much more in college football than Steve Spurrier did. But I guarantee you, tops is that ACC championship here in Duke, at Duke. He talks about it every chance he gets. He's so proud of what they did here in Durham. What does he say when he talks about it, James? You know what he does say? He, Ball star, offense, number 15, five-yard penalty, still first down. He tells you about every single 
play. You know, the, the Clemson, they had a big win, I guess, that year against Clemson right here. And it just, he will go through that game and, and the plays like it was yesterday. You know, I... What was our score last week? Louisville and Boston College. 41-39. Okay, 41. Well, I'm glad I got you up here. <laughs> like, but it's just, you know, it's it's amazing just how he remembers. I, I would guess every game he's ever coached in. Woo. Midfield complete. Adonica Sanders. 12 yards for Sanders. Catch and first down for Georgia Tech. How about the zip on that ball from Graham? Showing you what he can do when given a little bit of time. Nobody there in his face. It's going to come firing off. Good job on the route by the sophomore Sanders to get inside. Look out, a little bit of time here. Two minutes to play, trying to do something. Mason on the run. Lummy Young, the fourth. Number 23 and a sophomore from Anderson, South Carolina. Loss of three for Georgia Tech. So if you're Georgia Tech and head coach Jeff Collins, offensive coordinator Dave Patnode, got a lot of work to do at halftime, don't they, James? Yeah, they, 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 they pushed the right buttons last week in the losing effort. They uh, All of their productivity offensively came after the halftime talks. All 22 points in the second half against North Carolina. That one was somewhat up for grabs, and trying to chase it down was Josh Blackwell. Adonica Sanders was the intended receiver with 1.21 to go in the second quarter. Third and long and down 38-7 to for Coach Collins and Georgia Tech. The way Duke has looked in this first half, two games ago, 45-10 to on the road in Blacksburg, Virginia. To beat Virginia Tech, to play like that against a Bud Foster coach defense, I don't care where they are. You know, it's it's right now anyway. You start, you look at that pit win. Gosh, what what a victory for Pat Narduzzi to come down here a couple weeks after beating UCF, who hadn't been beaten in forever. They also got tested by Delaware, James, in the game yeah. that we did. Trailed Delaware in the fourth quarter before. Nick Patty found Valique Carter in the end zone. So there's a timeout on the field with. 121 on the clock. By the way, the last time Duke blocked a punt and returned it for a touchdown was 2012 in the game against Cincinnati. It was Gagnon with the block and Jackson with the return. 14 yards into the end zone, and just about everything has gone right today for Duke wearing the script. Duke on the side of the helmet in recognition of that 1989 ACC championship team. Well, and, and usually, and Jeff Collins will be the first to point this out, and he actually has pointed it out to us, that when a team blocks a punt, let alone scoops it, picks it up and goes and scores a touchdown, the team that had that punt blocked is, is probably going to lose that game. That's why he says our punt team, they're the ones that matter. They're the ones that we have a depth chart on. They're the ones we get a, that eat first at pregame meal. Usually it is Georgia Tech blocking kicks. 19 since 2013, the most in the conference, and very little productivity outside of that first drive for the Yellow Jackets. Graham, the spiral over the shoulder at the 10-yard line and caught. They'll mark him out at the 8. Amari and Brown, spectacular grab and throw for 40 yards. Wow, the 100-meter finalist, you know what starts is, is just when you start that route going north and south, you run it and you give yourself some padding on that sidelines. He did just that and gave his quarterback a chance to drop a dime. First and goal for Graham to the goal line, and he's in. Georgia Tech with a late touchdown. Eight yards on the run, James Graham. Back-to-back -back plays showing you what he can do. James Graham, when you call him a dual-threat quarterback, a lot of times you think, oh, well, shoot, he must be a really good runner and can throw it around a little bit. But that, that, that throw was not false advertising. We've seen him throw a couple times. Got a nice touchdown pass to Sanders against North Carolina. Beautifully throwing football. First rushing TD of the season for James Graham. 38-14, 108 to go in the second quarter. 
Malik Kai Carter, rather, last week. Here's our on the power play. Going out and beating everybody in blue to that end zone and punching it across. And it's a Georgia Tech team. The ongoing theme, that, you know, just refusing to fold up the tent. There isn't much that's gone right for them here in the first half. But before that bell goes off at the end of the first half, Jeff Collins' team continues to scrap, doing everything they can to stay in this one. So a late first half TD from Georgia Tech. So their first drive in the game and their most recent drive of the game, able to harvest a couple of touchdowns. Again, here's Brown. Excellent job. I mean, you talk about a perfectly thrown football. That was a 40-yard pass play, James. Nice route run there, too. Jackets desperately needing those points, and they got them late here in this quarter. Carter on the return, spins at the 20. Trying to sidestep a man at about the 23-yard line. That return by Carter is 17 yards, with now 59 seconds to go in our second quarter. Keep in mind, the Blue Devils have won two in a row, four of the last five in the series. Just 59 seconds, but a full complement of timeouts for Duke. And in this kind of game, you got to get as many as you can. Yeah. What would the head ball coach say? No, head, head ball coach, he never takes his foot off the gas. <laughs> you better believe that. Scheduled to join us in the third quarter. Even though they have all of the timeouts, Quentin Harris is just going to take a knee. Overall, very productive first half for Duke. 38 points. That's the most they have scored in a first half this season. Had 31 against Middle Tennessee in mid-September. That a win, part of a three-game winning streak that was interrupted last week in the loss at home against the Pittsburgh Panthers, 33-30 for the Blue Devils. So four rushing touchdowns in the first half, and the block punt and score on the return, their first since 2012 in a game against Cincinnati. Coach Cutcliffe, who's won 70 games as the head coach in his 18th year overall, 114 career wins. Also the head coach at Ole Miss from 98 to 2004, where he was an SEC coach of the year. That'll do it for the first half. A late touchdown by Georgia Tech. In fact, bookend touchdowns. Scored on their first drive and their last drive of the first half, but it's Duke in command, 38 to 14, James. Yeah, and then obviously some things to fix, and, and most notably, perhaps, the offensive line that has really been kind of just hodgepodge together with all of the injuries that they've had, doing the best that they can, but they need to protect for James Graham, Graham a little bit more. Coach Cut is with Abby right now. Coach, you can't. On homecoming, the Blue Devils have the 38-14 halftime lead. Before we start the third, moments ago, Abby Labar with Jeff Collins, the Georgia Tech head coach. Coach, you ended the half how you started the half, but what was your biggest takeaway from everything in between? Yeah, it's, it's self-inflicted wounds, and we just got to capitalize. When we do something positive, we got to capitalize, and if something negative happens to it, it can't turn into a touchdown, which is what has happened so far. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Abby, thank you. Deion Jackson on the return for Duke of 22 yards. The positive things for the Jackets, James, were at the beginning of the game and the end of the half. Yeah, and in between, there, there weren't a lot of stops. They, they, they got to find a way to get off the field defensively. They've done a better job on third downs, but it's got to, got to shut them down and keep them out of that end zone, give your offense a chance, like they did coming out in the second half last week against North Carolina. the first half. Two yards for Durant. He's already working on a career high as far as rushing is concerned for Mateo Durant. He's yeah. up to 64 yards. That's a career high. Coach Cut and the Blue Devils two of two on fourth down, so using all four downs a few times there in the first half. 
121 total rushing yards in the first half for the Blue Devils as Durant gets the call again. Four touchdown runs for Coach Cutcliffe in the first half. You see the minus four at half is because the victory formation around here, you, you take it out of a shotgun snap. Otherwise, it'd be maybe minus one or, or a no gainer. Harris. That's incomplete. Trey Swilling brought the pressure. Well, and that's defensively what they want to get back to, having enough bodies, enough guys you can trust in certain positions where you can create that mayhem, like blitzing guys off the edge. Good job by Swilling. Not Harris down, who still hasn't been sacked today, but he's pressured right there and forcing the incomplete pass. So, well, just what the doctor ordered for these Yellow Jackets. First series out there on defense anyway. First punt of the game, Austin Parker, the senior. Lancato watches it roll down near the 10-yard line. The punt was 53 yards from Austin Parker. Senior from Mount Pleasant, North Carolina. So if you're talking momentum, James, I think you'd have to favor Georgia Tech at this juncture. The touchdown at the end of the first half, and then three and out, and a first in this game for Duke, a punt. And back to Georgia Tech, and it's quarterback James Graham, a rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown in the first half. It's all going to come down to if the offensive line can help him a little bit. We, we've seen the couple instances where he had a chance, had some time to set up and, and throw the football, what he can do, but they got to help out. This pass to Davis. Tyler Davis, the tight end with the catch. Kwanzaa makes the tackle, wearing that number 90 in honor of his teammate, Brandon Adams. You know, and, and, and he, this is the way, if you recall that opening drive of the game, this is the way they started out. Slinging it around, sideline to sideline, try to tire out some of those good defensive linemen, those linebackers. For Duke, they had some success early with the little short passes for their young quarterback. Now seven of 15 passing. They'll pitch this one. 27 is Jordan Mason first down, down the sideline for Mason. Blackwell forced him out, 25 yards for Jordan Mason, the sophomore. Well, there you go. Left to right, that'll get him up and running in a quick pitch here. A little option pitch back to the days of old for Georgia Tech. And a, a big stop there, Malachi Carter, he holds that block one more second, and perhaps a touchdown. Long pass on schedule and caught. Graham. And Adonica Sanders combined on this one. And we're down to the 25-yard line. They got 35 yards on the hookup. Wait, this is this is a throw that Graham has down. That, that little fade throw with a little bit of space. Again, a little bit of space in between you and the sidelines. You run that route about four yards off, and you have some padding. Taking advantage of it right now, back the other side. Into the end zone near the pylon, and incomplete. Malachi Carter was the receiver, number 15 for Georgia Tech, and Blackwell deep in coverage in the end zone for Duke. I like the look of Georgia Tech coming out of the locker room, James. They are heaving it. <laughs> Absolutely. Going left to right and coming back the other side, and a nice job to not give up, to continue to fight by Blackwell. Rip that football away. And what looked to be right there in the breadbasket for a touchdown, and a quick strike by Georgia Tech. Instead, it's second down and 10. Graham looking left all the way, just has to heave this one. In fact, that'll go about four or five rows up. You need to put nets up. You're sitting in foul ball territory. <laughs> Enjoying the sunshine and pleasant weather this afternoon for homecoming here in Durham, North Carolina. Three of eight on third down of the game for both teams as we play early in the third quarter. Georgia Tech, first possession of the second half. Scored on their opening possession of the game. Scored in a one and four record this season. Their win came at home against USF. This to the end zone with some air under it, but incomplete in the back corner. Kalani Norris trying to chase it down. Michael Carter back there with him. And so fourth down for Georgia Tech.
Well, would have liked some points there. Big points instead of a try at three for Jeff Collins, but you got to be happy with the way he came out and made something happen here offensively. Open now that it's not all for naught. Brenton King, 42 yards away. Accurate. Distance and direction from Brenton King. Second made field goal in four chances this year. And Georgia Tech on its first possession of the second half puts up three points on the field goal by King. And have played every year since. In fact, Duke, when they played in 1993, was 9-0 headed into that game in Atlanta at Georgia Tech and lost to the Yellow Jackets. Six to nothing, their only loss of the season at the hands of the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets back in 1933. Ten unanswered points for the Yellow Jackets. The firm of Jackson and Jackson deep. And that is a free football on the kickoff, but it does go out of bounds. Got interesting, didn't it? Took the funny bounce. Ball be placed at the 35 yard line. The kickoff by Wesley Wells out of bounds and the flag on the play puts the ball up at the 35 yard line. Well, one thing we haven't seen in this game that we've seen in just about every game from this Duke offense, believe it or not, a little bit of that triple option look, and, and it really was the, the spark that they used to try to fight back into the game last week. Not that they've needed it very much here today. They've done a fine job running the football, just lining up and going behind the big offensive line. Harris sliding safely into second base with a six-yard gain. Speaking of baseball, when we met with David Cutcliffe yesterday, he rolled in with the New York Yankees visor on. He's looking forward to the playoffs. He was pretty jazzed about the Yankees. And, you know, I'm always jazzed when we get a chance to sit down there and, and let him reminisce and tell us some great stories, not just about football, as this one looks like it'll bring up a third down and short stop just shabby, but just life. And, and, and what it did turn to yesterday quite a bit was him as a kid wanting to be a New York Yankee growing up, quick on the snap here. Should be enough for the first down to Jackson. David Cutcliffe, 65 years old, from Birmingham, Alabama, was a student assistant coach at Alabama under Bear Bryant. And the rest, as they say, is history. 12th year as the head coach at Duke. And this program, this facility, the overall look of Duke football has overgone a complete overhaul under David Cutcliffe. Five winning seasons in the last six years. Best winning stretch since the mid-1960s. And bowl eligible six times in the last seven years. Duke had never been bowl eligible in back-to-back -back years until 2012. And they went to bowls from 2012 to 2015. When you break it down, what David Cutcliffe has done with this program is amazing. Violent. Tackle there at midfield as Deion Jackson was pulled to the turf after a two-yard game. Three and out for Duke. First offensive series. And here's a chance now at midfield with a third down and seven for Georgia Tech. Get off the field one more time. Trying to get set up first, though. And just shy of midfield. Harris back to pass. Pocket starts to crumble. He goes forward and goes down. Just got back to the original line of scrimmage. That brings up fourth and long for Duke, which did not punt at all in the first half. This is their second punt of the third quarter. Uh, nice job there by Andrew Thacker, the defensive coordinator, Jeff Collins, the head coach. Get that defense rev back up. A couple good stabs out of here to get him off the field. Blancato is the deep man. This one will bounce into the end zone. A punt of 51 yards from Austin Parker. 
Time out on the field. 9.39 to go in the third. Thank you very much, guys. A couple of young whippersnappers. <laughs> oh. Sorry, James. I know. I like that. Speaking my language. That's number 58. Yeah, Ben Wyatt, the long snapper. Appreciate them hanging out with us yesterday. Great meetings with the players and coaching staff for the Blue Devils. Three and two on the season, one and one in conference play. They are one and one in games here at Brooks Field, Wallace Wade Stadium. But 0 and one in conference play with the loss against Pittsburgh last week. They trailed 26 to three and came all the way back to take the lead. So it'll bring up third down. The very special guest has joined us in the broadcast booth. It is the head ball coach, Steve Spurrier, 1989, the ACC champs. Honor on the field. What a moment today for you, Coach. Yeah, so well, many it really was neat. Uh, actually, we've been doing this every five years, James, uh, since uh, 89, 94 was our first one. So we've had six of them, and this was the 30th year. A bunch of guys come back every year, so it's, uh, it's pretty neat to have the only championship in the last 57 years, uh, Duke football. Well, I know that, that you're so proud of, of what you, you guys accomplished here in, in, in your, your short stay. And it's funny, you mentioned to the crowd, everywhere you go, they don't want to talk about the Heisman. They don't want to talk about your national championship. They want to talk about this ACC championship and what a feat that was. Well, someone said, you know, you... Florida's won three nationals and won a bunch of SECs. We, we won a bunch when you were there. Uh, but these guys only won one in the last 57 years, one ACC championship. And it was a special year. We actually set those goals, you know, James, how we do it. And one of the guys said, Coach, we want to set a goal of winning the ACC championship. We were picked seventh out of 18 by the uh, uh, ACC sports writers. And then we had a huge upset over Clemson. We were one in three. And then uh, we found a running back and Clarkson Hines. Uh, we had two quarterbacks that played. Our defense played sort of eight-man front Number all eight. the time. Offense, uh, five-yard penalty. Rushed eight, nine guys. That's the only way we stop down. people. So uh, they played their hearts out every every game, and uh, our offensive guys could score a bunch of points. What do you think of this flashback, Coach? On the sideline, that's a lot of hat there. Well, let me tell you what happened. <laughs> <laughs> when we beat Clemson here, yeah. it was a rainy, rainy, rainy day. Okay. <laughs> And uh, I wore that hat on the sideline, <laughs> and I said, I'm going to wear this hat till we lose. There you go. And uh, so I wore it the rest of the year. Yeah. And uh, that was uh, at the basketball game. That was fun, a Duke basketball game when they gave us mm -hmm. the ACC trophy. And uh, that, that was a special moment. This pass is incomplete for Georgia Tech. And you defeated North Carolina in Chapel Hill in the last game of the season, 41 to nothing to solidify that ACC title. In fact, you were 3-0 against the Tar Heels, and you yeah. you addressed the crowd at halftime, and you might have thrown in a little bit about playing North Carolina. Well, the players weeks. love that. Yeah. The players want them to know that uh, they, <laughs> they didn't lose to the Tar Heels in three years. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it was, uh, they weren't very good that year, that last game. They were like 1-10 in 10 that year. But the big game was NC State here. After we had the upset of Clemson, we pretty much rolled through the other guys uh, pretty good. Uh, but State was a good team. They barely lost to Virginia the week before, or else we would have been playing them for the, basically the ACC championship. And they were trying to prevent us from winning it. And it was 28-26, uh, and our defensive back, White Smith, picked one off and went about 75 yards to get us up by nine and we held on and beat them 35-26. Well, it wasn't just all about the offense then. It was defense as well. Jim Collins was an assistant mm -hmm. on that staff. He's back here still working for Coach Cutcliffe here at Duke. It's a big third down and long. We'll take a look at this. Got to respect this third down and long all the time, don't you, Coach? Got it away and a first down at the 40. Good looking play there for Georgia Tech. I tell you, Georgia Tech looked good that opening drive, didn't they? They were completing every pass and had, had a seven to nothing, but uh, Duke, Duke has played well. I hope that we can finish this thing off here in good shape. Coach, you, you mentioned the great run there at the University of Florida, and, and, and a lot of that run, it, it would always come up to who's going to win that Tennessee and Florida game. And on that other sidelines, most of the time, was a, a, an offensive, great offensive mind by the name of Coach David Cutcliffe. And I know you've been around him a lot here at Duke. 
Absolutely. Not just coaching against him back then, but but what are your thoughts on on Coach Cutcliffe running the show here now? Oh yeah, Coach Cut is as they call him here. Uh, does, just does a super job. He's sort of I think the right guy for Duke University as far as class and handling things and, and saying what needs to be said. And uh, he's an excellent recruiter. You know, Duke's got a lot to offer these kids. They can come here, get a great education, and yeah, everybody can't play pro ball. That's <laughs> I know they all think they can, but uh, if you, you don't play pro ball, you need a degree, and one from Duke is really worth something. No, well, absolutely, and you've not only uh, spent time in Gainesville here in Durham, but a little bit of time in Columbia, South Carolina as well, and I'm sure you're keeping your eyes on that score. The Gamecocks on top late. Yeah, the Gamecocks are, are giving uh, the dogs. They're still up seven. Okay. Third down. Uh, yeah, Georgia's offense is a little suspect, I think. They don't uh, quite get guys open or whatever, so they're they're struggling a bit right now, and maybe the Gamecocks can pull the big, big upset. That was Chris Rump who was helped up after this previous play. It looked like Graham was hit as he threw as that ball started to wobble and incomplete. We're going to say it was uncatchable, though. Chris Rumpf is a Gainesville guy, Coach. Yeah. Went, to, went to Buholtz High School. Yeah, his dad coached at Florida yeah. there, coached the defensive line, went to Tennessee with Pruitt. Are they still winning, by the way? Tennessee, Miss State? I'm not sure. We need, need to get an update for you we'll on that We'll head to the one. update desk in just a moment you, you find know, out for you. You know, Tom, all the accolades that we've thrown out there for Coach here today, you, you, you got to make sure that you mention AAF champions as well when they shut <laughs> things down. Right, Coach? You guys were on top. <laughs> well, yeah, we were 7-1 when the league folded up, and uh, FanDuel, their online betting site out of Vegas, declared us the champs. They didn't want to return everybody's money, so they said uh, the Apollos are, are the champs, so that was nice. Oh, okay. Well, wonderful. Here's another third down and a long from Georgia Tech after just converting one moment ago. Five of 11 on third down. Graham to pass. He's looking deep to the end zone. Oliver was the receiver. And that ball hits the turf incomplete. Georgia Tech has really opened it up in the second half. They're heaving that ball all over the yard. And coach, both of these quarterbacks throw a pretty long ball, don't they? <laughs> They're throwing about 10 of those uh, takeoffs on bump and run. I, I sort of think maybe the D DBs ought to back off just a little bit because we've got a nice lead here. Let's don't give them that long, deep pass. Uh, but we're, I guess, a bump and run type team. Yeah, and the, the, the fade incorporated quite a bit now is... Jeff Collins will keep his offense out there on a fourth down and long. So this is fourth and eight. They're 0 for 1 on fourth down of the game. Graham Got him. took him down. Demu KG, number 51, first on the scene for the Blue Devils and a loss of one. They're coming into the game. 20 career tackles for loss and showing you what 51 can do when he turns on the Jets. Coach, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, you, you mind staying over through the break? Stick with us, us right? Yeah, I got plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> no, nowhere to go today. <laughs> Hanging out with Spurrier and Bates. I'm the lucky guy in two. Yeah. But outside of that, we need five coaches. ACC and SEC Coach of the Year. Nice job defending that pitch there. It, it, if it makes you feel any better, if you don't know, Coach, Coach Cutcliffe didn't get it yesterday. We asked him, though. Do you feel like you've got it? Oh, I don't know all five of them. Uh, I, would, I would say Danny Ford might have been one, huh? Are you sure? You talking about the coaches that won ACC and SEC? Yes, yes. Danny Ford won one? I'm no, being told, no. It's okay, not part but, of the answer. Okay, Arkansas. I thought Good we guess. Good guess. Oh, gosh. I... We got third and seven here for Duke. We're going to have that answer momentarily. Four of ten on mm -hmm. third down of the game. They're going to pitch it out. Mm. First down. Yeah. That's a first down. Pankle. Co Coach Cutcliffe was one, huh? Oh, yeah. 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 Coach Cut. Yeah. Nine yards of the first down on that previous play. Time to answer the FLAC quiz. David Cutcliffe, Steve Spurrier, Mark Ricks, Bill Curry, and Lou Holtz. Okay. All right. How about that? There you go. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, it's, it's the Mark Rick, the, the one year that they, they had a good year. He was there at, at Miami. Miami and Georgia. ACC, and the same thing goes with, with Lou Holtz in South Carolina. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Caught inside the 25-yard line. 
Demon Fillyard Johnson for 26 yards from Harris. Well, spreading it around and doing it with his feet several times here today, but more importantly, standing back there in the pocket and delivering just some beautifully thrown balls. A nice touch, Quentin Harris. Yeah, Quentin's a good player. I tell you what, I, I watched practice yesterday morning here, and I told Coach Cut afterwards, I said, you got a good-looking team. I mean, these guys are athletic, look big enough, fast enough, and he said, we are. We, we've got some ball players, and we didn't do very well the last game, but that was history. But uh, they could contend for the division, Coastal Division. Uh, yep. Certainly. Oh, year. absolutely. Hey, yeah. Coach, we, we've talked about your, your ACC championship team here in 1989. That's why we're here to celebrate that today. Mm -hmm. But uh, shortly after, you're not only at the University of Florida, but winning SEC championships right away at Florida. It, how did your time here in Durham help your time uh, to start so fast in yeah, the game? Yeah, James, there's no question about it. Uh, Fortunately, the Florida job opened up right after we won the ACC here in 89. And the players down there, when I started showing them the tapes and videos of the Duke and, and this, that, and the other, they could see that uh, talent-wise, uh, Duke could not compare to what I inherited at Florida. So the first year, our goal was to win the SEC, which we fortunately did, because we had the players to do it. And, uh, you know, if you got the players to do it, you got to set your goals high. And, and Shane Matthews was there, and the defense was, oh, gee, we had all kinds of players all over the place. So uh, we, got, we got off to a wonderful start, and I credit a lot of that to the 89 Duke championship. Well, that said, how tough would it be to go into a place like Georgia Tech, like Jeff Collins has done, and you... You may have some players, but you definitely don't have the players to run your system. And it, it's it's knowing that it's going to take a while. It seems like it would be a, a, a tough task. Yeah, he's got some building to do, obviously. And uh, recruiting-wise, yeah, they've got to get some, you know, bigger, uh, bigger guys, uh, faster guys. And uh, I tell you what, their quarterback throws the ball around pretty well. But, uh, yeah, they just got to recruit their way out of it, as they say. That is A.J. Reed. The 36-yard field goal in his second make of the game. Also had a 33-yarder back in the first quarter. 41-17 Duke out in front late in the third. Well, we saw you down on the field earlier as Coach Steve Spurrier, the head ball coach, with us up here in the booth and take a look at a few more pictures from your days here in Durham. But, you know, it's you've got another Spurrier down on the sidelines now, and we saw you down there earlier talking with your grandson, Gavin. How special is that uh, Gavin here? loves it here. Uh, I tell you what, Gavin was on uh, a team, South Warren High School in Bowling Green, Kentucky, last year, won the state championship. And we had a chance to go watch them win it uh, at Commonwealth Stadium there in Lexington. They'd be the team from Louisville, uh, but he's a he's a good player. He loves it here, and he's a little faster, quicker, stronger, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but he throws a nice ball, so uh, hopefully uh, Gavin, two or three years, will be a ball player here. And he's drinking he's drinking Gatorade of all things. And you were there at the University of Florida when Dr. Cade was experimenting and inventing Gatorade. Yeah, I think it helped us uh, back in the '60s. Uh, gosh, there's a, we played well just like this, about '85, and uh, you'd be tired after warm-ups, but you drink a little bit of that Gatorade. It'll get you through the game easily. Yeah, that was our Greatness Made Here feature presented by Sonovas. Steve Spurrier, kind okay. enough to join us here in the broadcast booth. We, we thank you for your time so okay. much, Coach. But I wanted to ask you something. When you look around at this facility and the changes it's undergone and the incredible advancements they've made in every aspect of this program, how do you feel about being part of the the foundation of that sort of thing? No, oh, I was, well, I owe my coaching career, whatever it became, to Duke. Uh, I had no job twice and got hired here but, <laughs> uh, as an offensive coordinator, my first job, and then as a head coach, first head co college jo job. But anyway, I'm down there, uh, uh, Anthony Dillwig, one of the quarterbacks I missed, and Steve Slade, they're here at the game. And uh, so I'm going to go down there and hang with those guys a little bit. Yeah. But they've really played well. Uh, quick story on Dillwig. He was here five years, never played because Steve Slayton was ahead of him. They came in together. So his fifth year, he finally got to be the, the quarterback. And I asked him, he'd already graduated. I said, what classes you taking? He said, oh, I got an acting class, theater, and blah, blah, blah. And I said, F, and I want you to act like you're the best quarterback in the country this year. And he did. He went to the line scrimmage like he was Johnny Unitas. He thought he was the best. And I'm damn, he played like the best, too. He really did. Won the Oscar. All right. Thank you very Coach, much. Thank you Coach. so much. That's the head ball coach, Steve Spurrier.
coach of Duke in 1989, the ACC champs, and we thank him for joining us here in the broadcast booth. What a what a wonderful chat with the College Football Hall of Famer, the Heisman Trophy winner. Uh, the list goes on, James well, Bates, and you were lucky enough to play for him in the mid-90s. You know, he's, he's meant so much for college football, and, and he has meant so much for, really for me, to offer me a scholarship, come back up to East Tennessee, where he actually grew up and went to high school. And I went to high school in Sevierville, Tennessee, and, uh, you know, I, I, I owe so much of my life to to being a Florida Gator, and it all started with him taking a chance on me as, as a young linebacker. So just uh, I, I can't even begin to, to describe how much the, that gentleman means to me and my family. National champs back in 1996 at Florida. That's going to be a sack for the Blue Devils in the closing seconds of this quarter. That's a loss of five. Dimo Cagey, who's been big defensively for Duke this afternoon, had a sack in the first half as well. His defense is now fired up here in the second half. So 41-17 after three quarters. Harvin. Blackwell. Midfield. And taken out of bounds. Trey Swilling made the play on special teams. 21 yards on the return by Blackwell. Quentin Harris, solid afternoon at the controls for the Blue Devils. 10 of 1,873 yards in the game for Harris. That is the backup quarterback, Chris Katrenik, number 15 and a sophomore. Well, I thought maybe for a second. Chris might be coming in, but it is Quentin Harris. Still in there running the show. Senior whose dad was a, a defensive back at Georgia. Coach, Coach Spurrier talking about those Georgia Bulldogs losing to his another former team of his, the South Carolina Gamecocks right now. Uh-oh. Harris just got sacked by Bruce Jordan Swilling. Talking about famous fathers. Father Pat playing at Georgia Tech. All-American and NFL All-Pro with New Orleans Saints took down Harris. Well, they, they've kept the big man clean for the most part. Only four sacks allowed coming into today. That's in the second sack of the game, I believe. The offensive line has done a fine job here throughout the day. Harris takes off. Taken down at midfield after four yards by Yun Juin. 32 in Tech gold and white and blue. Coming on the road to take on David Cutcliffe. And the Blue Devils. Coach Collins' team one and four on the season. The win came against UCF on September 7th in the home opener. Winning their home opener for the 21st time in 22 chances. And that one into a traffic pattern and incomplete. So that's fourth down for the Blue Devils. Clock stops, 13.41 to go in the fourth. Money down. My goodness, it's Demetrius Knight. is going to come fresh off the sidelines. The backup linebacker. <laughs> I mean, it looked like a hockey change coming it, over the boards. It, it did, and he found somebody and knocked him off their skates right away. Yeah. So, boy, talk about Johnny on the spot. Lucky they got him out there. Lincato is deep. They pressure the punt and get a piece of it. Parker's punt was deflected. It's like Jerry Howard Jr., number five. That's our second block punt of the game. Duke had one in the first half. They ran it into the end zone. And now Coach Collins' team gets a piece of it. And they've got the ball in Duke territory. Again, you're doing things right when you've got your key players, and it is Jerry Howard doing an excellent job of extending out there and knocking it down. And Jer Howard had some great plays against North Carolina on special teams. Here he comes up with the punt block, scored the first touchdown in this game, but continuing to scrap in all three phases, trying to hang around and score, score a few more points as they look down. And the 41-17 score. 
with their best starting field position of the game, Tyler Davis on the receiving end of the pass from James Graham for seven yards. That block kick, James, the 20th for Georgia Tech in its program since 2013, and that's the most in the ACC. The numbers for Graham, second career start. After getting his first one last week against North Carolina, that was a loss, 38-22 in Atlanta. The head ball coach liked James Graham, didn't he? Some nice things to say about him. Graham pitches it. Jerry Howard Jr. keeping his footing, first down. And fighting his way, trying to get to that 25, maybe just short of it with nine yards on the run. Shaka Hayward on the tackle. I think he'll have that first down. Has to take a step back to get in good pitch relationship and makes the guy miss. And how about the job? Carter and company blocking down the field to aid him and moving those sticks, keeping it going. Graham to the end zone. Malachi Carter, all out effort, but not enough. Gunnar Johnson was defending. Let's take a look at it. Again, they're in phase, and it has to be a perfectly thrown football and just a little bit too strong. That was missed Malachi Carter on the first big throw try against North Carolina. Found him, though. Touchdown in the third quarter. Beautifully thrown football. And a great catch last week against the Tar Heels, and that one just off the fingertips. They toss it out. It's Mason. 20-yard line. So that's the 15th carry of the game, James, for Mason. He's got 90 yards to lead the way for Georgia Tech on the ground. Now, the workhorse, and they found something that they, they like here of late, of getting it outside in a hurry and trying to beat him to the edge. Early on, they had success doing it with him lined up in the backfield. Mason had a touchdown run last week against North Carolina. He blasts it up the middle. Tough to bring down. Punishing running from Jordan Mason. Eight yards on the play. Tangelo in on the tackle. There is a flag on the play. Personal foul. Targeting. Number 10. Defense. Half the distance from the end of the run. Previous play is under further review. So James 10 is Marquise Waters. And you'll recall he had that goal line interception last week against Pittsburgh, his first of the season. And he's the one they flag here. <laughs> well, Waters has already made his hit based on that yeah, replay. Right. There's 10. There's 10. Here we go. You know, I mean, again, it, uh, it, it, this, is a, this is a tough one, I think, for all involved. They, they, they've called it on the field, and, and you look back at it, Again, but he's just trying to make a tackle. David Curry earlier, just trying to go in and make a tackle. And, you know, the, he leads with that crown. There's, there's really nothing about this that's, that's violent. As he kind of strikes forward, trying to kind of cut off the angle, and the helmet's hit. But, so, James, I think the key here is, yes, it meets those criteria that you mentioned. But by the letter of the law, a dangerous hit that involves right. launching, upward thrust, or severe strike, or any forcible hit by the crown of the helmet. Yes. Is it dangerous? Yes. Is it forcible? Here's another one. He wasn't defenseless. Again, on the Curry hit, the offensive player was defenseless. So, so you have some argument there. But you come back to he led with the crown, and it's about protecting the defensive player as much as it is protecting the offensive After player. After further review, there is no targeting on the play. However, and the results of the play are first. And I would agree with that. Again, James, the key words, forcible and also dangerous. And I don't think that hit necessarily met those two no. words and adjectives to describe that play. Well, I agree. I, I absolutely agree. And, and like I said earlier, I, I hate to see any of them, you know, when when it's not like they're going in there headhunting. They're just trying to make a football play. And, and I get it, and it's tough. And that really would have been a tough one here in the fourth quarter because he would have missed the first half. Yep. Next week, into yep. the CPI red zone here, these Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets trying to add to that 17 now. Good decision by Gary Patterson and the officiating crew also working with our replay official upstairs, Larry Malum. Jordan Mason on the carry. 
just nine yards for Mason, who's gone over 100 yards rushing in this game. Georgia Tech moving quickly, trying to get to the end zone. Mason, big pile up in the middle. 106 yards of the game for Mason. He's got to be careful, too, trying to extend and do everything he can to get that first down yardage. But when you get in the thick of it like that, you got to be careful protecting that football. As you mentioned that he goes over 100 now. And 18 rushes, the workhorse of this offense. The sophomore, another Tennessee. Already went over 1,000 yards rushing in his career earlier in this game. A little razzle gadget. Tobias Oliver going the other way, and he's into the end zone. Four yards, Tobias Oliver. That's a tough one to defend. Here's James Graham, who took a shot after he pitched that ball. So take, keep an eye on Graham here. He's, he's going to pitch it away. And just, you know, I'm guessing maybe he knocked the wind out of him as he landed funny. But here's, here's Oliver, who, as we know, can throw it. Tobias Oliver, the former quarterback and and he certainly has the option you see him setting them up like he could throw it Tyler Davis does a good job realizing that ball's not coming to me I'm gonna turn and block for number eight and then I skip into the end zone for the former quarterback but Georgia Tech fans hoping that the current one the redshirt freshman is okay it's smiling looks to be all right so second rushing touchdown of the season for Tobias Oliver. Four yards on the run. 41-23, and now Georgia Tech is going for two. Jordan Yates, number 13 in a quarterback. Oliver is also in there. So the two-point attempt for Georgia Tech. That's Oliver right of your screen and in motion. Just scored the touchdown from two yards, four yards away. Yates picks it back up, trying to throw it near the goal line, and it got knocked down. And there were three Duke blue shirts closest to the football. Leonard Johnson sent it to the turf. 41-23, the Yellow Jackets just got a rushing touchdown on a razzle-dazzle play by Tobias Oliver. This was the attempt at two as Yates had to come in, and you saw that a couple of Duke players got tangled up near the goal line. Edgar Serenord was the slowest one to get up, but the fastest one over there. He, he's like that, that shark smelling blood in the water. He had that pick against Pitt. He wanted more. Looks like a, a defensive back over there. Hopefully he's okay because he's still needing a little bit of help to get around. That pick you mentioned, James, was the first of the career of the senior Edgar Serenord from Miami, Florida. In fact, Duke forced four turnovers last week. They did everything but win the football game, and they'll keep an eye on Serenord on the sideline. Thirty-eight fourteen was our halftime score. Field goal and a touchdown for Georgia Tech, and a field goal for Duke. In the second half, it was Javon Jackson. That's the guy who scooped up the block punt and took it in the end zone, James. A couple of block punts in our game. Georgia Tech just got one a few moments ago. Gagnon blocked the one for two. And Jerry Howard, the running back for Georgia Tech, got his paws on one, blocked one as well. So. Here's the numbers when you look at it last Saturday night against this afternoon. And it's Georgia Tech. Yeah, just the turnover is the real significant difference there for Quentin Harris. 
How about our conversation with Quentin Harris yesterday, James? That is a sharp young man who will be successful regardless of what he decides to pursue. Yeah, I, I didn't hear some of it because I was sitting there in my own head thinking, well, what a loser I was when I was his age. <laughs> like, this guy is sharp, oh. man. Was it? I'm still not anywhere near that. They've been the host of our ACC baseball tournament on a number of occasions. Durham Bulls Athletic Park with the blue monster in left field and the big bull sign. If you hit the sign, right, uh -huh. at Durham Bulls Athletic Park, if you hit the bull, you get a steak. Oh. But if you hit the grass below the bull, you only get a salad. So if you hit it over the wall for a home run. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that. You should go to a game there. Oh, it, what a beautiful venue. Yes. I'll bet you it's a great place to have the ACC tournament. And Speaking of beautiful venues, look where we are today. Wallace Wade Stadium. At first glance, you might think that's synthetic turf. That is natural grass. They had mowers out before the game that looked like the mowers at Augusta National on the greens there. I mean, that surface is perfect. The job that they have done with this stadium and its most recent upgrades, the field, Brooks Field, Wallace Wade Stadium, simply incredible, and they've been playing football here at Duke in this facility since 1929. Yeah, I've never seen mowers in pregame. We'll back it up here is movement on the offensive side. False start, number 69, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. But mowers weren't the only thing that were there on Brooks Field in pregame. The, the, the dummies, the tackling dummies, and Georgia Tech straight out getting after it. Jeff Collins and company, I mean, they, they preach a lot of hype, a lot of music, and a lot of a lot of fierce tackling defensively. They called Coach Jeff Collins the minister of mayhem when he was a defensive coordinator, and making sure his guys are ready to bring guys to the ground because these coaches, you know, they talk about it all the time. Live reps, in-game reps going to the ground, and, and those are other bodies, and somebody's going to get hurt. But you know what? You get out there, and if you're going to do it, and, and it means that much to you during the week, you bring those those all that equipment on the road and it's just kind of interesting to see him really not just getting out there and getting warm but straight up getting lathered up and ready to play saw a lot of saw a lot of o's not a lot of x's roll. <laughs> yeah. it's hard to roll an x that's yeah, the problem true. you know just stick with the circular version unfortunately it was duke doing most of the damage if you're a georgia tech fan in that first half that's Deion Jackson on the run, just a couple yards. And Chico Bennett's number 15 to make the play. Duke, winners of the Independence Bowl against his old team, the Temple Owls. He did not coach in the bowl game last year, taking over as the first-year head coach of Georgia. On the scoreboard, looks pretty good on this homecoming Saturday afternoon as well. 41-23. to 23. Got my man Tom Wormy up here. I'm James Bates. Abby Labar down on the sidelines doing all kinds of work here in the research triangle area, going back and forth with hockey. And don't forget, Steve Spurrier joined us in the booth yeah, for the quarter as well, your former coach. That I was guess fun. Once a coach, always a coach and player relationship when it comes to Steve Spurrier, yeah. right? Well, yeah, oh, well, of course. He's the hammer, I'm the nail. And he let us know at the end, hey, Bates, I'm going to go talk to my buddies now. Take all that headset and poof. <laughs> he told us about his upcoming schedule. I like that. <laughs> He's fantastic, and we thank him for his time. Steve Spurrier, one of a kind. Harris. Absorbed some contact near the marker. Needed to get to about the 47. And as they say in college football, it's going to depend on the spot. <laughs> and they also say it's a game of inches, and he does look to be a few inches short. But you know, more importantly, it's, it, and you know, there, there's still seven and a half minutes here left to play. So you're not quite out of the woods yet, but here's your quarterback. This, this is your team right here, and I, and I think it will be it's a good spot before that yellow marker. But, man, in, in a game that, you know, you're, you're really close to kind of just slamming the door on, you hold your breath when your quarterback fighting for you like that. And look, there's, there's the end result. So your senior putting forth the effort to move those change, a fresh set of downs on a big, gutty run by Quentin Harris. Now, I mentioned that Duke has 
five winning seasons in the last six years. The only time they didn't have a winning season in that span, James, was 2016. They went four and nine. But consider this. Their only win of the ACC schedule was at home against North Carolina, 28-27. And on September 24th of that year, they won at Notre Dame, 38-35. So even a year where their record was not above, above 500, they had some signature victories in this program. Winners of their last two bowl games as well. Independence Bowl, Quick Lane Bowl. Also won the Pinstripe Bowl back in 2015. First bowl win since 1961. Are you kidding me? I mean, seriously, when you map it out, James, and see what David Cutcliffe has done, mm -hmm. it is staggering side by side with the history of this program. It is, and you know what, and, and that's that's on the football field, and, and Coach Spurrier hit on it. You know, these these student athletes that, that come here to Duke and play football, they're goes without saying getting an incredible incredible education but you know an education on, on how to do things right how to be a, a good person from their head coach most importantly wow there's a nice lick how about what david cutcliffe told us yesterday like when they're at practice and they're all in, involved and ensconced in football and then he says and then he says to the players he says, you get, you're working on that paper for uh, political yeah. science? Yeah. And they look at him like, how does he know yeah. that? Because he's David Cutcliffe. And, that's why he knows that. And because he cares. Because yes. he really does care. And he's not just going through the motions. You know, and, and, it, it, and it trickles down. We were talking with his defensive coordinator, Matt Guerrero, yesterday. He said, you know, I'm, I'm around the best coach in college football. Coach Cut, obviously a little bit biased, the opinion there is. It'll be stopped short on third down, but it's because of his consistency. He, you know, it's why is our team consistent? Because our head coach is consistent. You know, we come in in the morning and, and Coach Cuts out there pulling weeds out, out behind the facility. He, you know, leave it better than, than when you came in. It's, and it's not just these coaches giving lip service either. I, I had a brother that played for Coach Cut at Tennessee, and the, the things that he learned, he said, you know, you'd learn things like he'd tell you things that as a college kid you probably aren't thinking about, but Hey, tip that tip that server at, at breakfast as much as you would at night because it's not going to cost as much, and they're working just as hard. They, you know, and just they've got a jump start. And yep, he spent 19 years as an assistant at Tennessee and national champs for the balls back in 1998. In 43 to 20 for Duke, Jeff Collins, first year head coach for Georgia Tech. You know, and 0-2 in conference play. They struggled defensively against North Carolina last week, allowed 587 yards of total offense to the Tar Heels. The team we will see next week, James, as Mac Brown and North Carolina go on the road with their freshman quarterback, Sam Howell, to take on Virginia Tech. She had a big win against Miami a week ago. Mm, both teams with the weekend off to get ready for that clash, so... Nice, hasn't been up to Blacksburg in a while. Enter Sandman. Yeah, Virginia Tech's won five of the last six against North Carolina, and that was interesting technique from Austin Parker as it goes into the end zone with a 47-yard punt. Well, better result, even though it's touchback than the last time out there. Put on the run, it was a block by Jerry Howard and. And on into the end zone, Jordan Mason getting him down there close. And Tobias Oliver. He thought about throwing it, but no need when you scoot into the end zone there. And there's your Land Rover, the drive. Four yard TD run for Tobias Oliver. And that his second rushing touchdown of the season. It's a four-yard gain for Jerry Howard Jr. More on Serenord, who went out recently for Duke Abbey. Over on the sideline, he was getting tended to on his backside. A helmet had collided with his backside, but I did get confirmation that he will be fine to go back in the game. He was limping around a little bit earlier on the sideline, but now he has his helmet on, and he's waiting. Looks like he's ready to go back in. 
a headbutt, I guess is what you would call that. 47 career games for Serenard in a Duke uniform. Missed last season after the game against Georgia Tech on the road. Had an Achilles injury against the Yellow Jackets in that win last year on the road in Atlanta. For the Blue Devils. Took it last year, 28 to 14. And so Serenord, the update there on the senior. McSwain is in there for Serenord. Late in the fourth, 41-23. Pretty good response by the Blue Devils after losing a close one against Pittsburgh at home a week ago. And what does this effort do for them, James, moving forward? Because they're at Virginia next Saturday, and they lost at home against Virginia last year, 28-14. Wow. <laughs> How about the juice coming around the edge? You talk about turning it on, McSwain, Trevon McSwain. Boy, he saw it. He saw an opportunity, and he, uh, I didn't think he was going to get the James Graham before he released it. He comes around that edge, full throttle. Fourth sack of the game for Duke. Victor Dimukeji has three of them. So, you know, we talk about the offensive line and, and how much they've improved, and they, they've had some pretty good players in the front seven here in the last few years and it's just there's nice depth over there defensively as well now I mean, you've got guys like McSwain and Rumpf that are backups listed as backups you know even Drew Jordan you go too deep across and, the, and this is the tech. that's their first time out of the second half this, this is in a day and age Tom when most of these teams, a lot of these teams, they'll have three down, three defensive linemen, uh, odd man front, because they just don't have the bodies. They don't have enough to have four across. But that's not the case here at Duke. Some good guys, and, and, and then to take it back to the next level, linebackers. You know, we've seen some greats here the last few years there as well. All right, let's go down to the sidelines and Abby Labar. The week comes in the form of a Twitter account called The Coalition, started by defensive backs coach Derek Jones. The Coalition represents the DB's unit. They call themselves a group of cheetahs that hunt together. There it is. They wear all that cheetah swag, and they take pride in branding themselves with that. Derek Jones says, well, it's imperative that you watch the hips of the guy you cover as a DB, and that's exactly what cheetahs do when they hunt their prey. But it's not just the defensive backs. The entire defensive core plays by the philosophy of each unit making plays, working, and hunting together. So you have the defensive line called the Rushmen, and the linebackers are called the Wild Dogs. <laughs> wow. Wow. A lot of yeah. uh, nature going on there, a lot of wildlife. So, Abby, would you rather be a Rushman, a <laughs> wild dog, or a cheetah? I like the wild dogs. <laughs> really? I, I would have thought maybe cheetah. I, I like the wild dogs, too. Will we be in the same, same room I'm there? I'm not there. fast enough to be a cheetah, to be honest. <laughs> okay, okay. How about you, Tom? I'm still thinking about it, James. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I was, I was looking up a stat. 364 yards in total for Duke prior to that play. And Jalen Coleman, the freshman on the carry. Yeah, they, uh, uh, maybe uh, how about a mountain lion <laughs> or a panther yeah. or an eagle? Yeah. Well, I don't well know. You, you know, those aren't options. You only oh. had a couple options of Sorry. what's already there. In no, place. I, was, I was making up yeah. my own. But so. when you're a cheetah, you can, you can truly kind of like break it down. Hey, they watch the hips. When you're a wild dog, they just say, you know, uh, wild dogs, uh, they kind of just walk around and, and eat whatever they can. <laughs> you know, like just, uh, just scrappers, I guess. It's the Blue Devils now inside of two minutes to go that are headed towards victory. As Coleman gets the call again, Georgia Tech has taken a timeout. It's second. So the Blue Devils are going to improve to four and two. Two and one in conference play. And two and one here. 41-23. David Cutcliffe for the Blue Devils. 
Ahead of Jeff Collins, first year head coach, last two years at Temple, won 15 games, trying to change the culture, change the attitude. Talking about branding and momentum of the program. It always helps to win, but Georgia Tech trying to turn things around in Atlanta. It's a drastic change when you've been running the same offense for over a decade. Well, and, and, and I know it's tough, Yellow Jacket fans, but, but I think that you know you just you just ride with your guys because they continue to they continue to play hard all four quarters they're practicing hard we certainly know that and i think they're going to be okay you just you just got to be patient which is kind of tough to do in this day and age yeah don't forget georgia tech was a bowl team last year played in the quick lane bowl in late december did lose to minnesota 20 bowl appearances in the last 22 years for this program there's a lot of pride for Georgia Tech and for Duke as another timeout by the Yellow Jackets. Well, and, and, you know, I mean, and that shows right there. Look, hey, we're going to use these timeouts. We got them. We're, we're here. We're playing football. And, and look at that. Third down and short. It's not a team. It's not a team. That, hey, we're already back in Atlanta. It's we're not going to win this football game. We've worked hard. I just going to go. Uh, go home on Saturday night and, and, and what am I going to do? It's, you know, they're, they're going to continue to fight and they, they've got to fight ahead of them. I mean, look at that schedule the rest of the way. They're, you know, to, to get that first ACC win, it's going to be tough. Going home to play Miami at noon next Saturday. The team they defeated last year 27-21. That is at Miami, correction, at Miami, then home to take on Pittsburgh. Well, and then they, they end it against the Georgia Bulldogs. And an update on that one we were talking about earlier when Coach Spurrier was up here in, in two overtimes. Will Muschamps, South Carolina Gamecocks, win it 20-17 to 17 over Georgia. How about that? Delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. So here it's going to be Duke throwing their hat in the ring for the Coastal Division, which it always seems, goes right down to the final week. Duke winners of the Coastal back in 2013. Well, remind everybody, even though <laughs> Duke fans don't, don't want to hear it, that that's a South Carolina team playing some pretty good football that it was beat by Matt Brown in North Carolina at the beginning of the season. What a game that was in Uptown Charlotte at Bank of America Stadium. Two drives over 90 yards in the fourth quarter by North Carolina to win that game. And by that freshman quarterback, Sam Howe, leading the charge, and we'll see him in the Tar Heels. Our crew will anyway next weekend. Tar Heels, yeah, they haven't won in Blacksburg since 2015 when they won in overtime, 30-27. Hey. to 27. hey. Daniel Jones on the sidelines. Likes what he sees this afternoon. Yeah, what, a, what a first year it's been for him with the Giants. Yeah, that just doesn't happen. You know, I, I don't care how good you are. They, they go right on in and, and they'll be ready to go. Won those first two games and, and looking pretty good. I mean, that's... It says a lot about what, what he learned as a quarterback here under Coach David Cutcliffe. Yeah, tough game against the six-time world champion, yeah. Super Bowl champs, Patriots, but it's all a learning process in his first year. And, you know, that's an interesting dynamic. Quentin Harris, who's a senior, we talked about this at the top of the show, a senior but getting his first year to start, how much he gleaned and learned from yeah. being behind Daniel Jones on the depth chart. Well, and you know, it's funny. I mean, look at Georgia Tech offensively continue to, to fight, but it's, it, it, you talk about a, a difference. Daniel Jones, he never loved, you know, it, it's not like it's just in a room full of reporters, but we'd go in there on Fridays and, and, and he just got a little bit better over the years, but never really seemed to love just sitting there and, and talking about himself. You know, he's, he's a great leader of the team. It, 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 it takes all types, but... That's not the case with Quentin Harris. You know, he, he could have sat there and, and held court for, for many hours. It was, it was interesting and, you know, very, very good storyteller like his, like his head coach as well. Running away from pressure and out of bounds, short of midfield. James Graham. Yeah, opportunities. It's using those timeouts. Here's an opportunity. 
to work your two-minute drill with a quarterback who, who's had to share time, who's just in his second start. Yeah, you're not going to win this football game, but you know what? You, it's an opportunity that Jeff Collins, he sees and he's taken advantage of. And, and, you know, he knows his team will grow from this experience. Third and short for the Jackets in the bright sunshine of Durham, North Carolina. First down, a little bit more continuous work from Jemias Griffin. He got seven. It's going to be Smith on the carry. So Smith got seven. Clock continuing to roll. We're just outside 30 seconds to go in this game. It's going to be a win for Duke. There's more pressure there. Chris Rumpf on the play for the Blue Devils. They're going to improve to four and two, and they've now won four of their last five games. And it's their first home win in conference in two contests in the ACC. And a factor in the Coastal Division, James. It's going to be exciting yeah. as we get into the meat of the schedule and see who rises to the top of the Coastal. As has been said a thousand times before today, the last six years, a different team has won the Coastal. The only team that hasn't won it is Virginia. We thought they were on a trajectory to dominate the division. Miami comes up yesterday and beats them at home. Smith on the run for Georgia Tech. And Smith running hard. And, and, and what is the, oh, if I'm not mistaken, it's, it's, it's been a long time or it's never happened that the, the preseason favorite, the preseason pick to win the Coastal, it's, it hasn't been that team. I told you that Virginia is on the schedule next for the Blue Devils. They will go to Charlottesville for the 71st meeting against the Cavaliers. Final seconds. They're trying to clock it with one second left. You know, you, Duke fans are booing, but, but, but it's exactly what I just said. This is, a, this is an opportunity that you can't recreate at practice. You know, let them boo you. That, well, there's, there's, a, there's a head ball coach quote for you. You joined our, our broadcast today. And I, that's, that's what you say. Let them boo you. It means they, they respect you. If they don't <laughs> boo you, they don't respect you. <laughs> Nobody was booing him today. They were all cheers and support. Oh, yeah. It was Steve Spurrier in that 1989 ACC championship team. Honored at halftime. Coach Spurrier joined us in the booth, and that will be the final play of this game. 41-23. David Cutcliffe gets the victory. It is for Cutcliffe, his 71st as the head coach of the Blue Devils, and it improves their record to 4-2. and two. The Jackets fall to 1-5. and five. Impressive performance by the Blue Devils today, James. 